Hello, my name is Captain Mike Taylor and I'm a docent at the Whaling Museum. Stop and look at any exhibit, no matter its size, it is a story to tell. Today, I'd like to talk about a shantyman, a whaling vessel, and a leader in social business relations. In a corner of our Turner Sperm Whale Gallery, hanging on the wall, is a painting of a whale factory ship, the Cosmos, along with two of its catchers. The painting has many memories for me from my seagoing days. The artist, Stanley James Hugo, he was born in Hoylake, 1906, and died in 1992 on the Wirral, Cheshire, close by our dock scene. It shows a Norwegian whaler, the Cosmos, in Camel Laird's number no. seven dry dock in Birkenhead, England. Hugo was more famously known as the last shantyman, having served on perhaps the last commercial four-masted bark, the Garthpool, where for a time he was bosun. On board, sea shanties would still have been sung in order to keep timing when hoisting and squaring sails. That's him in the background. The Garthpool ran aground and broke up on one of the Cape Verde Islands in 1929. Hugo spent four and a half years as a prisoner of war during the Second World War, after which he spent the next 25 years as part of the first outward bound school in Wales. There he instructed young men who were attending, supposedly to toughen them up. Interestingly, he was fluent in Japanese, Spanish, and spoke a number of other languages. There is a num now an international shanty competition known as the Stan Hugill Memorial Trophy as a recognition to the contribution of this art. So, what's a whaler doing in Birkenhead Dry Dock? Birkenhead lies opposite to Liverpool, which can be reached by a ferry across the Mersey, made for famous by Jerry and the Pacemakers. It was a popular song in my day when you could visit the cavern, watch the Beatles, all for the price of a beer. Whaling vessels and their accompanying tankers, catchers, boy boats, and perhaps a corvette required service at regular intervals. They had worked 24 hours, seven days a week, catching, cleansing, and boiling their catch when on station. The factory vessel transferred her oil to tankers, which then had to discharge their, those cargoes to customers, either in Holland or the United Kingdom. Birkenhead was very close to perhaps England's largest user of this oil. Imports of whale oil were banned in the United Kingdom in 1973. The shipping company I first worked for was port registered in Liverpool, and my vessels would use this particular dry dock in the picture to have their bottoms scraped of barnacles and repainted with anti-fouling paint. Other repairs, such as replacing zinc anodes, those were the zinc bars round the propeller 
that were used to stop pitting damage. Bilge keels were also straightened or fared, as we would say, at the same time. And this is exactly what our whaler and its catchers are having done after their discharge allowed crew relief, taking on new supplies prior to sailing the 6,800, about 24 days, miles back to Leith in South Georgia for the onward Arctic whaling hunting season. Whale oil had been discharged at Bromborough Docks for short for the short rail transfer to the adjacent Port Sunlight for processing. It's just a short distance from the dock on the south bank of the Mersey. Port Sunlight is now a listed place of interest and it was founded by the Lever Brothers in 1880 as a worker, social, friendly factory site. William Lever constructed various styles of housing using a number of different architects, I believe up to 50. There he built these special houses, schools, hospital, theater, swimming pool, and a church. As an avid art collector, he also built an art gallery, all of which make for a worthwhile visit today. Train oil, that's the oil from other than sperm whales, was previously used for soap under the Sunlight Soap name made at the Leverbrass facility. Whale oil soap was usually the rough type used in clothes washing, while face soap used olive oil or other vegetable oils. Later, when hydrogenation was introduced, it was made into margarine, a shelf-stable substitute for butter. And that's why our vessel, after discharging, came to dry dock in New Birkenhead. So whilst it may be just a picture on a wall, it's like everything else in this wonderful museum. It has a story to tell. When we open, please do come and visit. And should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask one of us. Thank you for watching.